Hey guys, Ryan here. Uh, for the past month, we've been hosting a tournament called the Character Clash Tournament. And uh, basically the gist of that is everybody was given a character from the anime and were told to build the best deck that they could. Uh, we just finished up the, uh, the Swiss rounds and we've moved on to the top cut. So here is the, uh, the seating of all of the, uh, the people in the tournament uh, in order of how they finished in Swiss. Uh, a couple stipulations that we put into place for the tournament uh, was each deck required a 40% of the uh, character's archetype to be present in the deck. Uh, so that would be like 22 cards because we're counting the uh, the main deck and the extra deck. So uh, about 22 cards needed to be in the, in the deck to be considered legal. Um, the other thing that we did is we uh, banned a couple cards. We banned Union Carer. Carrier, Linkross, uh, Aurorodon, uh, Verte Anaconda, and Eldritch the Golden Lord. Uh, that was just an effort to hopefully help balance things a little bit um, and make it so that not, not every deck is the exact same. So here's the, uh, the bracket for the top cut, uh, and without further ado, let's jump right into that first match. The first game is between uh, Speedroids and DDD, so the Speedroid player is going first. Uh, not the best opening, unfortunately opening up with the, uh, the Takatom Borg means that you can't search it out with your uh, with your Terror Top. And interestingly enough, he actually hits the Terror Top off of the Gum Gum. Um, that rarely happens. Too bad he can't take advantage of it. Ending on the Clear Wing is eh, not bad. Our DDD player digs for all of the things, but his contract is stopped by that twister. Uh, it does put a damper on him. Apparently that uh, O-Lion token was incredibly uh, <laughs> worth the ticket. Uh, I mean, sure, you do you, Liam. Uh, Gilgamesh comes out and puts two scales right there for the Pentum Summon. I mean, I would give anything for a magician link that does that. That would be busted. Clearwing does put in some work with negating that, though. However, Kelly Yuga does his thing and negates all face-up cards on the opponent's side. Of the Actually, just all face-up cards. Uh, banishing the Crystal Wing to search out the Top and Town Borg, which is hit by Called by the Grave. Uh, that's a bummer. Still gets that second normal summon, though. Search out the Snowbell and is able to go into an Adamatspador. Not really hitting anything what is speed droid deck that doesn't run any rocks i'm <laughs> shocked uh here is the biggest brain play of the entire tournament uh kelly yuga activates his effect to destroy the scales i uh, i got nothing why would why would you do that? i mean sure maybe you didn't know what it, how did you get in the top cup liam tell me please Anyway, our Speedroid player ends up going into Needle Fiber and searching out a Red Eye, uh, One-Eyed Dice. Goes into Fast Dragon. Um, both monsters are summoned from the extra deck, so they are both able to be negated and zeroed out by Fast Dragon, and our DDD player scoops it up. On to game number two, DDD player is going first with a bunch of draw power. Uh, hits uh, Slime on the Reasoning. Apparently the Speedroid player said, you know what, we're just going to call one. Hope we get the Slime. Double DD Crow on the Slime and Lania? Lania? That's, that's, that's rough. Unfortunately, drawing into that second Snowbell, eh, not the greatest. Into the Void is dead at the moment, uh, but the DD player has a full graveyard and is able to just recover pretty much everything he needs. Gilgamesh sets the scales, Pendulum Summon, and that's pretty much game right there. Eight K. Game number three. Speedroid player decides to go first, and that is an awful hand. I guess search out the Ice Bell, sure, set the two uh, infinite impermanences. 
Look at all that draw power. Discarding the Nibiru off of the one for one because he's activated into the void, so he's not gonna have it on your on the Speedroid's turn anyway. Desires draws another Nibiru and a no, Dark Ruler no more. So a lot of uh, a lot of dead cards on those draws, unfortunately. DD Crow coming in clutch with the banishing of slime. And the infinite impermanence preventing some recursion. Some more deed de doing deedity things. Uh, the speedroid player is forced to activate infinite impermanence on the was a High King Caesar because that is preventing Ice Bell from being summoned. Uh, DD player should have negated there. Uh, you should have negated there too. Why are you waiting? Okay, fine. I guess you could negate Snowbelt, sure. But anyway, um, negating the Ice Spell is, is, is the way to go. Um, so yeah, now Fast Dragon's out, and monsters both summoned from or the the High King is summoned from the extra deck, so it is able to be negated and zeroed out. And that's not going to do anything. Yeah. So Fast Dragon's able to just crash over Gilgamesh, doing some nice damage. Gilgamesh does float, but uh, that set Dynamiscus is going to make short work of the contract. And at this point, uh, it's pretty much over and he just takes it out himself. The second match of the wild card round is Go Onizuki versus Jaden Yuki. Uh, Heroes versus Goki. Looks like uh, Heroes won the toss. So they're gonna go first and do uh, hero stuff. Lots of lots of summon some, some vision heroes for the uh, for the material. Vion sending the shadow mist to search out. I believe it was Celestia. More hero stuff. Lots of hero stuff. Shadow Mist summoned to search out a mask change. And then summon the Dark Law on their on the opponent's turn. So Goki really doesn't like Dark Law, in case you, you hadn't figured that out. Um, none of the effects go off, and so she tries to hit the Dark Law, but uh, Sunrise is able to prevent the, uh, the attack from going through. So uh, game number two, and Goki goes first so that it can actually play and not worry about Dark Law. Uh, but if you look over at the uh, the hero player, they do have the lightning storm, so that's gonna definitely put a damper on this board. Going into Appaloosa as soon as possible to avoid the Nibiru. That is some some pro plays. Rematch to get back some more materials. Lots of uh, lots of summoning. Decent board. Uh, I think uh, the far right one is unaffected by card effects. So that's why the lightning storm doesn't go through. However, it does lose its uh, attack boost. Shadow Miss searching out one of the vision heroes. And then just go into Trinity and uh, punch it. Barely enough for game. The third match of the wild card round is Mokuba Kaiba versus Playmaker. Playmaker decides to go first and is doing lots of cyber stuff. Um, <laughs> Honestly, though, Cynet Codec is nuts. Every time you summon a uh, Code Talker, you can search out a cipher of a different, uh, same attribute. I think of the same attribute. Um, 
it's it's absolutely crazy how much advantage is gained just from from that one card. Since most of them either can be used as a link summon from the hand, like Microcoder, or uh, just straight up special summoned, uh, it's great. Thunder Dragons going into Thunder Dragon stuff. Uh, Nightmare to spin away that uh, sign that codec. And to, uh, I think, discard one of the uh, one of the Thunder Dragons. Unfortunately, there's no response that you can make uh, Titan miss timing on, and uh, he's able to just clear his board. Not able to go for lethal, but uh, I mean, there's not much you can do against this setup. Might have been a little premature on the uh, on the Titan Pop. Um, he still had a bit of resources in his hand that he's able to kind of work it through a little bit and uh, uh, clear some uh, the attack there. And with the duo and the uh, the instant fusion, that's that's pretty much an easy game at this point. Game number two. The maker decides to go first again. I think he's must have been worried about. Uh, I don't know what he's worried about. I feel like he has a better chance of breaking a board with uh, access code talker than he does building one. Um, he does have some neat co-link options with transcode talker since it can't be destroyed if it's co-linked. But I don't think it it doesn't give that a protection to the rest of them. So he can't really make a solid board uh, that's impervious to Titan. Certainly nothing to stick a shake at. There's, uh, there's a lot of muscle in the bar. I just feel like that would probably have been better off as a going second turn, since you do not have to worry about Colossus. Hashtag Colossus was a mistake. Our Thunder Dragon player is learning very slowly that Transco Talker is protected. Uh, eventually, though, uh, he'll be able to target the correct card with, with the effect uh, and then be able to clear it a little bit more. Uh, unfortunately, he's unable to attack for game, but he's able to burn. And the final match of the wild card round is Shun versus Yugi Moto. Uh, the Raid Raptor player goes first and is able to make a decent board. I mean, this is what Raid Raptors do. They go into uh, Y Strix and uh, pass. <laughs> Thankfully for him, the, uh, the Magnet Warrior that kind of bricked, and they're hoping that a uh, 2k booty is enough. Even though the uh, Force Strix was negated, it still searches out the Soul Shave rank up magic, so he's able to go into Cyber Dragon Infinity and then summon a barrier statue from the deck. Not a great draw, uh, and the barrier statue is preventing any special summoning. And Cyber Dragon prevents uh, even a battle phase to attack into the barrier statue. So this is pretty much game right here. Um, I don't think there's anything that... Uh, yeah, this is game. Game number two. Magnet Warriors are going first and just normal summon pass. Uh, apparently he's not got a very good hand opening up all the, uh, all the deltas. Mm -hmm. Maybe not what you wanted to look for. Um, even if he had been able to go off at all, there was that threat of the Nibiru getting dropped. Raid Raptors did open up a little bit better, being able to search out that continuous spell. 
getting out uh, four strikes and wise strikes, searching out that soul shape again. Um, this is fairly standard Simorg uh, combos. That's what I use in the Harpy deck. Uh, and at this point, again, really not much you can do once he summons the, uh, the barrier statue. Cyber Dragon Infinity Negates. And uh, from here, great. But Simorg adds just too much advantage and uh, able to just attack over it. All right, that was the wild card round of the Character Clash Tournament 2020. Uh, I'm working on the top 16 replays right now, so I should have those up probably sometime next week. Um, so keep an eye out for those. But yeah, peace out.